This is Access, which is about to fully launch pretty soon. And this is a follow-up on my last video I made three months ago because I got to test out some of their updates. So make sure to stay until the end of the video so you can get my complete unfiltered thoughts on Access compared to other trackers. Now, this video is sponsored, but it will not affect or alter my thoughts on what I think about this product. So Access is going to have a new setup wizard pretty soon, and it's going to make the initial setup really easy because before you had to fiddle around with a lot of different options in the menu. So I'm excited to have this be a more straightforward process when setting up my gear since, um... I'm not used to having to go through so many steps to start playing my games. I really wish I could test out their mobile app for the hip trackers, but they currently don't have available for iPhone right now. And while that's a bummer, not having the hip tracking hasn't really hindered my experience at all because judging from their new hip and spine determination update, I, uh, I don't know. Looks pretty good to me. I mentioned in my other videos that Access has real-time low latency tracking and it's specifically built for VR gaming as well as real-time mocap. So it's kind of cool to see my avatar move with my body like it's one-to-one. -one. <laughs> it's really cool. One thing that I do wish Access could include in their light kit are bands that are a little longer when you go to purchase them. Like, it, I would love to have an option where you can select the band size because look, I'm not super muscular or thick per se, but um, I was having issues getting strapped in with my gear. And since access is module, I can use these four nodes anywhere on my body, but that's kind of impossible unless if I want to go to the store and sew on more Velcro. And this really matters because certain games work better with different node placements I've noticed. I had a couple of people asking me these questions in my last video and I wanted to follow up with that in this video by saying that these nodes have four hours of battery life, which I know is a bummer for some people, but a lot of the community members in the Access Discord have been collaborating with the devs on creating battery life extenders as well as supporting creator functions like OSC haptics and slime VR capability. So yes, you can combine your Access trackers with slime for more precision. And no, don't ask me how you do that because I have no idea. I honestly suggest just joining their Discord and talking to people who are actually creating to get a better idea on how to set all that up. Also, real quick about the battery life thing. While I was editing this video, the devs just announced their brand new setup wizard and that they're working on adding a setting where you can extend the battery life on your access nodes. So now it's going to be a lot longer lasting than four hours. Like, I don't know, isn't that awesome? Like, I'm excited. I really like how helpful the devs are in their Discord and how willing they are to listen to feedback because I was struggling to configure my trackers with the recent updates and I kept having issues where like in VR chat, I thought my leg trackers were in my spine. And then as it turns out, this was happening because I was a few centimeters off on measuring my hips. Yes, that's right. I'm not used to having to measure my actual limbs to use my trackers. And because I was off on the measurements, it messed up with the placements of my trackers. Just a few centimeters off really does matter apparently in these. So shout out to Sid and Ham for being so patient with my smooth brain and helping me figure this stuff out. Now, since I'm only testing out their leg kit, that means that I only have four nodes to work with, which means there's going to be some limitations when using this with other things. Like for example, I'm a VTuber and the majority of VTubing programs work better with an iPhone because of the face ID. So anyone who's interested in VTubing with these, um, I would say it would be better to opt in for their standard kit because you would have a lot more nodes to set up. And from what I can see, the devs are working on like a bridge between a 3D VTubing program like Wardodo, but you're going to need more nodes to kind of use that. Like they have a half body and a full body setup guide and um, I can't use any of those since, well, I don't have enough nodes. Although if you currently have slime VR, you could combine it with the access light kit and use it that way. But chances are you're like me contemplating what fun things you can do with just four little nodes. So here's a suggestion. Okay, I actually did accidentally hit my head while playing Dance Dash a few times. I tried playing this game called Zenith and the leg tracking works decently, but I think this game is way too complicated for my smooth brain to play. And then I tried this other game called Banter, but 
I forgot to record my footage of it. And I also found out that they currently don't support lake tracking anyways. But the devs are going to be implementing it soon in this game in the future. I wanted to try out some of the other games listed on the Access website, but they're all paid games and I'm broke. So I just bought Dance Dash because it was on sale. And well, it's kind of a rhythm game I wanted to try out for a while. Overall, my experiences with playing these games, leg tracking are, well, I, it's hard to say, but it feels kind of limited, not because of access, but because like the games themselves have like certain or I, I'm not sure how else to describe it other than like if you want to get your legs working in some games you have to do a little bit of a workaround to get stuff moving and not every game is set up I guess uh, efficiently for leg tracking regardless if you're using access or any other like full body gear but there are a lot of games that you can play that are way more fun when you can well use your legs I know for me personally I'll be primarily using access in VR chat but I did enjoy playing games like dance dash you might be wondering how I ended up here and I say don't ask questions you don't want to know the answers to but I really like how lightweight access is I think what really gets me is the fact that I'm only using four nodes and it's module. I really like that I'm able to swap out the tracking points seamlessly and it's not that difficult to calibrate. Okay, let's talk about drift here. Wait a minute. That's what- oh. Okay, it looks like I forgot to actually write down my notes about the drift on this and I literally just wrote, let's talk about drift here in my script. Oh my god. Okay, okay, so about drift. Um, one thing that I am kind of noticing is that I'm having a little bit of an issue trying to get my legs to accurately depict how I'm sitting down right now. So it looks like I have my legs crossed, but I actually have them pretty um, straightened. Hi, Mari editing from the future here. So I saw that the devs in the Discord released a video talking about magnetic fields. And after watching this, I realized that the reason why my leg tracking is off every single time when I'm sitting down is because, well, I have a lot of metal in my room. Specifically, my mini fridge and my giant secret labs desk that's magnetic. <laughs> and guess where I'm sitting? Right in front of every single time I want to sit and talk. That's right, in front of my desk. So no wonder whenever I sit down, it doesn't track well, like obviously. But thankfully, Access does have an option to toggle this off. And as long as I'm not too close to my desk, my tracking is a lot more accurate. Although, I do need to calibrate more often with this feature turned off. Now, something that I wanted to clarify quickly in case anyone who might be like me and have a lot of metals in their play area too. But basically, in the terms of drift, it is an IMU tracker. There's always going to be drift. But in comparison to the other IMU trackers that I have tested out before, the drift on these is not nearly as noticeable. Like, sure. My legs right now, I have to like, they're crisscross right now. And like I, got, like I said earlier, I can make them move out a little bit more if I want to, but I have a dress on anyway, so it's fine for me. I didn't realize this until I started looking at my footage, but it looks like I'm floating around a lot with Makopi compared to Access, and I have no idea why. It's been a while since I've used Makopi, and I don't remember the drift being this noticeable. But then again, I do have a giant magnetic desk that could be messing with my Makopi tracking and making the drift worse. I also have that magnometer turned off for access, and I'm really happy to see the accuracy improve. And I honestly don't mind having to recalibrate more often because this looks way better compared to when I first started using access a few months ago, and it feels a lot more stable. It's an amazing feeling when someone as smooth brained as me finally figures out how to get things working properly. Okay, one thing that I would like to clarify about Axis is that currently it requires a PC to use and it does not support standalone VR just yet, okay? But according to Sit on Discord, they are working on implementing that in the future. Is this worth getting? And my answer for that is, well, it depends. I just realized that there were chopsticks in this. <laughs> Gosh, I just, I really hate answering these types of questions because I always feel like every other like YouTuber who makes these kind of videos is always like, yes, buy this product. Or they're like, no, don't buy this product because it sucks. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, man, I don't know. <laughs> it depends. Like, it really depends. And look at that, I made ramen. Wonder how this tastes. 
Oi, somebody come eat this. I promise it's not a scam and I didn't poison it. It's really good, I promise. <sighs> I know a lot of people commented about the battery life in my last video, and I think depending on what your needs are with full body tracking, well, that could be the deal breaker between choosing Access or another IMU option. Like if you bought their standard or pro kit, then that would be a lot better, I think, because at least when the battery gets low, you can just swap out the nodes. Also, I mentioned earlier in the video that the devs and some community members are working out a 3D printed battery life extender, and apparently, it's going to work as a single node charger. So if you're willing to be patient and still want to try it out, then I think it's worth it because of how modular, lightweight, and low latency their trackers are. To me, the low latency is what I care about the most because, well, I'm a VTuber. And I noticed in my past experiences using other IMU trackers in like my 3D VTubing apps that there is a delay in my movements and sometimes that's really annoying when i'm trying to stream so it really comes down to at least in my opinion that if you want to have full body tracking when you play your vr games but you don't want to set up base stations and you also want to have low latency movements then i think the access light kit will work really well for you especially since their light kit is specifically made to be their more affordable options for VR games. Now, I am waiting for their iPhone update so I can see if I can get my model to track in Wadado with just four nodes and maybe like the hip tracker on their app because, well, I have a few ideas on how to combine my webcam for like my upper body and then having access track my lower body. Overall, I've been enjoying using access to my VR gear. It did take me a while to really understand how to utilize this product the way I want it to and I got a lot of, of that help from their Discord. So I can't stress enough to join their Discord if you have any questions or need help setting up with your gear. I know it sounds weird for me to promote the Discord a lot, but like, I'm not kidding when I talk about like, I, I really struggled trying to figure out how to use my gear properly. Like if you're a complete beginner and you don't understand like a lot of the technical terms for it, sometimes like asking for help is very crucial to be able to use your product more efficiently. And I'll call it how it is. Not many companies are willing to really troubleshoot that kind of stuff with you. So like, I I'm surprised by how helpful everyone is in the community, not even just like the devs, but like the actual other people who are in that Discord are so kind and helpful. So if you're interested in purchasing your own Axis gear, but you're international, then don't worry. Axis ships internationally within three to five working days. So you can get any Axis set or accessories without worrying about whether your region or country is supported. So what do you think? If you have any questions about using Axis, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them. But remember, <laughs> I'm also smooth-brained and I'm slowly learning how to use VR for games and VTubing. Thank you to everyone who chooses to support me on Patreon and my YouTube to members and thank you for watching because now I need to figure out how to make 3D VTuber models for VR chat because well reasons. <laughs>